Hello, welcome back. Today, two of our normal home cooks are going to be challenged to cook up recipes from a mystery grocery shop bag of fresh ingredients. Boys, what you got? Flatbreads. Love yes, it. something pre-made. Chives. So what we're going to ask them to do is create three different midweek meals, two portions of each with minimal food waste, and we're going to see that improvised thought process unfold in real time. They will also have access to a dry store cupboard. Then after that, I'll show you what the chefs here at Sorted Food would have done with the same ingredients in a tried and tested recipe pack, which we'll make sure we get onto Sidekick 2. Oh. That's a fairly normal bag of ingredients, which isn't usually how this goes. Ideally, no more than 30 minutes per recipe. So that's 90 minutes in total. There's two of you, we're giving you 45 minutes and your time starts now. Right, I've got one dish that's screaming to okay, me. Okay, hit me. Pork sword and mash with mushrooms. Mm. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do honey and mustard. Honey and mustard pork. But with... Wait, wow, that's so much pork for one dish. For two people? No. No? No. No? That's that's right. go wrong. One Jamie. <laughs> Okay, well, I could probably do something with chicken. You just start doing you. Fine. But don't use everything. No, that's fine. I'll use potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> I like this logic. <laughs> okay, we could do uh, chicken, mushroom, cream cheese sauce. Uh, you're going to need the milk for the mash, right? Yep. You're going to need some parmesan for the mash. Yep. Yep. Jay's choosing to use kitchen appliances to speed up his midweek cooking. He's microwaving potatoes. Otherwise, we're going to have to boil a pan of water, peel the potatoes, and so knowing that I can do them in a microwave, scoop out the insides, it's already done then, it's mash. Get some colour on those. I'm going to cover my pork sword in honey and Dijon mustard. Flavour bombs. Get the flavour in there after it's seared off on all sides and then into the oven to cook through. Classic combinations. Done well, that's what we want midweek. Charring these sprouts off on a really high heat because we want to get some colour. What have you got left? We've got pork, flatbread, sprouts, lettuce. Oh, let's have some, let's split some parsley and chives across everything. Yep. What, where do we use one potato? I could cube it and then put it through this. I don't know what that dish is. You could use pasta. We could use pasta. Because it's in the store cupboard. But I'm, yep. I'm trying to avoid it because of that. So should I just use it for mash? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate this is not exactly how cooking works. You've had a third of your time. Have you done a third of the dishes yet? Or a third of each dish? I'd say yes. Yes. Mushrooms are looking good. Sprouts are looking good. Now I'm going to put some garlic in. Whole cloves of garlic going in, crushed. I'll try and remember to fish those out later. Yeah, let's go, let's go seashells. Heavily salted water. I should have done the pasta earlier, but I'm gonna use some of the pasta water and the cream cheese to make a bit of a sauce with some of the fresh herbs. Let's see what happens. Here's what we're doing. We're making North African pizza with grilled lettuce and a Brussels sprout slaw. No! No, no listen. Oh, you listen. did not consult me. I was too focused on keeping my eye on this boil, but I took it off of that boil. So yep. pork <laughs> with North African flavours, not a North African dish. Yep. Is that enough pasta for two people? It is, yes. Okay, thank God. Start getting some stuff on a plate. As soon as my mash is done, that pork dish is completed. Well done, mate. And then we just need to come together like two absolute heroes in the last 14 minutes to make a third dish. It's coming out, it's gonna rest. Half the chives we've got through the sauce, fresh parsley, off the stalks, on the top for garnish. Two dishes done, and I tasted them, they're not dreadful. Ah, oh, I forgot to take the garlic out. Never mind, <laughs> extra flavor. Coming up to the 40 minute mark. Jay's getting his dish on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? One and a half mushrooms on each plate. <laughs> Excellent. I still don't know what you want me to do with the fresh stuff. Salady slaw. Why don't you do like a, a flavoured ma flavored mayo? Mayonnaise, a bit of cider vinegar. Basically making salad cream. Yeah. Hello, how are you doing? Great, how are you? We know that chilli and honey is a good combo. Jay's gone with tomato, chilli flakes. 
harissa pork, and then honey. And then he's putting it into an oven on a rack, which is bound to make his oven an absolute disaster to try and clean midweek. <coughs> You've got 40 seconds left. Right, so shall I get them out? Yes, please. Jay, I am just going to dump. No! Why are you putting it on top? That's what we discussed. No, it's not. That's cold. We did not say to put it on top. We did. <laughs> Last five seconds. And stop. I think that's all right. I think that's not bad at all. Let's have a quick clear down and get these into the sexies. You boys are getting pretty good at this. After a decade of normal home cooking, this is the kind of thing that anyone would happily sit down to eat. Lovely and classic. Chicken, mushroom, cream cheese and herbs. There's nothing not to like. The only thing I could criticise is the method and process of getting there with multiple pans to end up with what could have been a two pan or possibly even a one pan dish. But what you've ended up with is great. Nice, done, tick. Moving on to dish number two. And I'm gonna have to be really picky here because otherwise it's just all too good. The only thing I can say is it's a bit weird to serve one and a half mushrooms. Absolutely not. That looks amazing! <laughs> <laughs> but look, I'm being picky. You did mash using the microwave hack. You cook the pork with honey and mustard. And I think using the air fryer for me to cooking is brilliant. Quite a lot of equipment again. And it's a really lovely way of using up the cream cheese that was left over from this dish. Really smart and really tasty. Pork's good. Mm. Oh, that's two dishes. Excellent. And then there's this one, which I feel really... Ebbers, being... you're using up the side salad. <laughs> if we're being realistic. Why is it on top? Because it looks, because it covers up what you put underneath oh, it. now, come on. It's a flat bread of sorts <laughs> with something on top. You just got to dig for it. And you know what? If it's a well-dressed salad, there's oh. nothing wrong with that as well. My issue with lettuce mm. is its reputation. It has a bad rap as being boring. But actually, for lettuce to be well dressed and seasoned and to taste like lettuce is not a bad thing. And underneath the flatbread, the spicy pork. Different enough to this. Yeah, it is. Because it's got that spice. Really well cooked again, mate. And again, I'm picking at straws, but the only thing I'd suggest to get it in the oven a bit earlier, because I think the, the flatbread could be a bit crisper rather than as doughy as it is. You didn't have anything left over. <laughs> Otherwise, milk and parmesan, Absolutely long shelf life, carry on for another day. There's very little to fault, I think it's genius. Would you like me to show you what the chefs here at Sorted would have done with the same ingredients? We need to do a high 15 first. Yes. I feel used. You're welcome. <laughs> this is the perfect way to kill a buzz. Ebbers, what are you going to be making? I'm going to be doing three dishes, not too dissimilar from where you went. I'm starting with honey roast pork and sprout mash. <laughs> Except I'm not preheating an oven, I'm preheating an air fryer. All three recipes are using air fryer. Jay, when you did your mash, you microwaved and then scooped out the skins. Yep. Absolutely fine, great method for nice fluffy mashed potato, but you are left with skins. So here, as long as they're clean, I'm just whacking the potatoes into a pan, skin and all, because when you mash it, you get all that extra taste and fiber and texture as well. So covered with water, seasoned, and a lid. So all the way through this, we're thinking about time saving and energy saving. It's why we're using the air fryer, because you're not having to preheat an entire oven, just the little box you're using. And we're doing things like adding a lid to make sure it comes up to a boil quicker. Pork. In order to fit it into our air fryer, I'm just gonna cut it down the middle. And I think what you guys did was a really smart way of stretching a pork fillet across two dishes. For this, given the way it's gonna cook and shrink up, we're actually gonna cook that as is. I absolutely love our air fryer. Like, it's literally all we use most of the week now. Our oven doesn't go on. So that's gonna cook away for 10 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius, and then we can leave it to rest. At the moment, no honey, which you did your honey and mustard on it as it cooked, which mm -hmm. gives you wonderful glaze. We're gonna do that afterwards. This gives me plenty of time now, while our potatoes are coming up to boil, to prep two things, sprouts and half a packet of our chives. And you don't need it to be super, super fine in the sense of like a slaw, because you're not gonna be eating them raw, we are going to cook them. But we're gonna add them into the same pan as the potatoes once the potatoes are nearly done. All in all, this is probably just shy of a 30 minute cook. 
but so much of it is passive because all the preparation is now done, the sprouts, the chives, the potatoes are just coming up to a boil <coughs> and the pork's got six minutes left. This is downtime now. Ample time to do some... Life chores, DM, life admin. DM sliding. Or slide into DMs, yeah. <laughs> the blue tick has wonders. <laughs> <laughs> Once our pork is done, we'll bring it to the front. Now, every bit of pig and every bit of pork is gonna be slightly different. You kind of want something that's cooked all the way through. In practice, you can test that just by touch. However, if you're unsure, cutting into it like Jamie did is exactly the way forward, just so you know. However, I would say, especially pork fillet, it can be a little bit pink in the middle, and the nature of resting means it's gonna to continue to do a bit of temperature equalization. So at the moment, that's just pork. However, honey and mustard is a great combination, isn't it, Jay? <laughs> it's a really good combo, I think, Evers. So just while it's on the board, honey and mustard. <laughs> the logic being here, your board is already dirty, you're gonna wash it up anyway, so why dirty something else? And you don't necessarily want all your honey and mustard in the bottom of your air fryer because that comes an absolute pain to clear up afterwards. So doing it this way, in the resting juices, you get to a very similar place. Nice. And if you really want, you Ooh. can just keep it warm. Another couple of minutes until our potatoes are almost cooked and then our sprouts go in for two or three minutes. Now all we need to do is drain it off, put it back into the same pan and mash it with our chives and about a third of our pack of cream cheese. Boiling the sprouts in the potato water would not have even dawned on me, but it's obvious. And the other advantage, Jay, is you've got a flat bottom. Yep. And a flat bottom to most mashers, which is easier than a bowl. And you mash it, and it's all in one. Now, Jay created a beautiful sauce to go over the top, which was wonderful. This, in theory, will have some lovely board juices that have rested, and those will go into the mash as well. Oh, I see. Now, this is gonna look like a lot. But bearing in mind, it's not just your mash, it's also got your entire veg in it. Some people on Psychic have suggested really lovely twists in the form of things like... Half the mash. Subbing out half your mash for half parsnip to be even more yeah. uh, veg in there. And then exactly as you did, Jay, slightly pink and blushed. Finish with a garnish of chives. Looks great. First dish, about 25 minutes, sorted. <laughs> And in theory, what you're left with is one pan and colander and a wipe out of your uh, air fryer because you didn't make the sauce in there. It's just a little bit of oil, salt, pepper in there. Easy. You can do the pork in a traditional oven though, can't you? Yeah. All of these recipes you could do in a traditional oven. You might need to increase the cooking time by about five minutes because you haven't got the fierceness of that fan doing the air fry part. Dish two. Still uses the air fryer, so I'm going to preheat it. This dish is stuffed mushrooms with polenta. But what we're doing with it is we're stuffing it with chicken. <laughs> and by doing that, just two thighs stretched out with a few other ingredients will go an awful long way. Interesting, okay. So I'm gonna start by kind of mincing it up on a board. Well, when I think of stuffed mushrooms, stuffed peppers, it's the vegetarian option. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's it nice does have a bit of a, yeah, a bad re reputation. It? Yeah. It's like quite a basic move. So we're gonna add lots of lovely flavors to this. About a teaspoon of dried oregano, of panko breadcrumbs, the rest of our cream cheese, and a little bit of our hard cheese. Salt and pepper, and mix it all together. Now mushrooms massively shrink when they cook, so we're gonna serve three per portion, and we're gonna put this mixture inside. A little bit more Parmesan over the top, and now that our air fry is preheated, they go into it, 200 degrees Celsius, for 15 minutes. Now what I'm going to do is add our milk, about 400 mils, into a pan and slowly bring that up to a gentle simmer whilst we wash up our raw board, our bowl, our work surface and chop some chives. Nice and cleaned down and now that our milk is nice and hot, we're just going to whisk in 75 grams of polenta and literally it cooks in a matter of a couple of minutes at which point it should have the consistency of mashed potato, and then we're gonna add in all of our fresh herbs, so it's nice and herby, salt, pepper, and a good grating of that Parmesan. If you find it gets too thick, you can also add in a little bit more water, and if it's too thin, you can also add in a little bit more polenta, because it's so fine, it cooks so quick, but that ratio works nicely. The thing with polenta is you don't even have to do it with the dairy, you could use a stock, if you like, does the same thing, same kind of ratio, 
but the milk gives it a nice creaminess. Oh my goodness, this is, this is gonna taste amazing. Again, that is such a hefty portion. And yet only two chicken thighs. There we go. Chicken stuffed mushrooms on cheesy polenta, sorted. Hey. I don't like it when he says that, I don't like it. Still left with a very, very clean air fryer, one pan, everything else was washed up as we went along. Super simple. Do you want a third? Absolutely. Recipe number three, guess what? Preheat and air fryer, 200 degrees Celsius. Chicken thighs, and we're gonna make nuggets. We're listening. So yes, the base here is gonna be a lettuce, but we want to add lots of texture, lots of flavor, and there's some quite interesting things we can do with an air fryer when we're making like homemade nuggets. That's what we're gonna show you. And then while we're in knife mode, our flatbreads into similar sized pieces. So basically, we're gonna make croutons. And now I need two bowls to basically do a really cheap panne. If you're cooking in an air fryer, you're not submerging this in oil. So all your breadcrumbs need to have a little bit of oil on them so they go nice and golden and crispy, but you're in control because you're adding just a tablespoon of it. Classic panne would be flour, egg, breadcrumbs. In a pack like this, we haven't got fresh eggs to use up, so we're just gonna make a very simple slurry, which is a couple of tablespoons of flour with a couple of tablespoons of water and it essentially gives you something that will cling to your chicken that then the breadcrumbs will also stick to. So the chicken goes through our batter, then into our breadcrumbs. I love the look of that. Chicken's going in, remember these are bite-sized chunks, and then all around those chicken we place the bread, about 10 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. All of these recipes can be done on baking trays in the oven instead of the fryer, what you probably want is that same 200 degrees Celsius. You might need an extra 25, 30% on time because you haven't got the intensity of the air fryer part. At this point, we're gonna do a quick wash up and clear down to get rid of raw meat, and then we can make the salad. And this is testament to how many times you guys have now used Psychic and are thinking like chefs, because the salad mic looks incredibly familiar. Gonna make a dressing. This time I'm gonna do it in the bowl that I will then add the salad to. <laughs> You're so actually it's using cider vinegar as well. And it's three tablespoons of that so and a splash of cider vinegar. Yes, so good. good. On top of that, salt, pepper, and a clove of garlic. And all of that Ooh. goes in and just gets tossed together. I'm also gonna add in the last of our parsley. That's what we end up with. And then one more flavor. This is the first time we're gonna absolutely oh, mess up the inside of our air fryer. But a few tablespoons of sriracha, and then jiggle, 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 and it just seasons all of those beautiful bits of chicken, and you end up with almost a buffalo-style oh, chicken. That is how to make a salad good. Sorted. Yes. Three midweek meals, no food waste, the milk, the parmesan goes back in the fridge for another occasion. And the only thing we were left with was our mushroom stalks. Can be added to anything that you cook, whether it's scrambled eggs, pastas, broths, stews, casseroles, bolognese. Let's add more food waste than we did. <laughs> that is more food waste than you guys did. <laughs> Valid. Can we taste them? Yes. yes. I cannot wait. I'm most intrigued by mash and the polenta, which is absolutely delicious. That glaze is delicious. Not a million miles away from where you were, no, Jay. No, Just, you know, maybe the sprouts in there as an addition. But still 25 minutes, simple enough, midweek. What about this one? Oh, man, that is delicious. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh wow. That is, oh, that is delicious. That is fantastic. So simple, it's a good way to stretch just two chicken thighs. But I think the thing with these kind of psychic recipes is they're all also great inspiration. Mm. Because that chicken yeah. thigh could also be a couple of sausages that have had their meat squeezed out of them, or a, a lamb mince, or whatever you've got kicking around would work. By mincing up the chicken thighs with the garlic and the herbs and the cream cheese, so good. Stop Excellent. eating that, I want to eat the next one. Excellent, nugs. Get nugs in my... Chicken nugget salad face. Chicken nugget salad. Cheers. Cheers. That looks great. Ooh. 
Oh, that's brilliant. So flavorful. And the mayonnaise with a side of vinegar. You did a great job on balancing that out. But actually the raw garlic gives it a little bit of warmth as well. But these are the kind of tips and tricks that mean you can put dinner on the table pretty simply and quickly midweek, but you're not missing out on flavor and good hearty balanced food. But also, it's just great for inspiration. Mix things up, because these weren't a million miles away from what you did without the help of Psychic. These are just <whistles> twisted a little bit. Yeah. Unbelievable, Ebbers. Mm. Yeah, well, well these they three, start? they're already tried and tested. We'll get them up onto Psychic, which is free for 30 days. But boys, I think it was your best effort on a grocery shop challenge ever. Comment down below, how do you think they got on, and what would you have done with those same ingredients? <laughs>